Hello everyone, this is John Cassidy, and today we are touring the Highland Park High School, Community College, and Career Academy. As we go along, I will be giving you the history of the Highland Park neighborhood and the school itself. Be sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, comment, and stick around to the end to see the auditorium that recently burned down. In many ways, the history of Detroit and Highland Park, a separate city located within the borders of Detroit, are very similar. Both cities experienced tremendous growth as a result of the automobile industry and built up their city services to meet demand. Both cities lost population after the auto industry left, and today both cities are struggling with how to provide the same city services to fewer people with less tax revenue. Budget cuts have led to the closure of most of Highland Park's fire stations, libraries, and schools. A three-block stretch of Highland Street running west from Woodward Avenue was once the civic center of the city. Along Highland and nearby streets were five schools, three churches, and two hospitals, and the main library mixed in with the ornate high-rise apartment buildings. In this densely populated neighborhood, one could be born, baptized, attend nursery school, elementary school, high school, and college, all without having to go more than three blocks in any direction. Right at the center of the neighborhood is the old Highland Park High School and Junior College, which we are currently walking through. A block-long slab of quarry-faced limestone that played an important role in the development of the Highland Park from obscure village into an industrial boomtown. This is the main atrium of the building, which connects the two schools. In 1900, Highland Park was just a small village north of Detroit, population of 427. Through the early 1900s, the city grew as Detroit developed north along Woodward Avenue spurring residential development. In 1907, Henry Ford began to move his automobile production from the Paquette Avenue plant in Detroit to a new, much larger factory located in Highland Park. The factory opened in 1909. A year later, the population of Highland Park had risen to 4,120, as workers quickly built up the neighborhoods around the Ford plant. Like other early school districts, Highland Park School taught from kindergarten to eighth grade level, at which point young adults were expected to join the workforce. Starting in 1911, high school courses were introduced, with 42 students enrolled in 9th and 10th grade levels at the Stevens Elementary. They then moved to the new Ferris School when it opened in November. The next year, 11th and 12th grades were introduced. Demand for a higher education was enough that by 1912 plans were underway to build a dedicated high school building. Initially, the Board of Education wanted to build the new high school east of Woodward Avenue, at Farrand and John R. Streets, but instead settled on a large rectangular parcel of land along Glendale Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenues. Though the high school would take up only a small part of the land, school officials wanted additional space to expand the school if needed. Excavation at the site began as the first high school class of 14 students graduated from Ferris School in 1913. In 1914, a contract for construction of the new building designed by Wells B. Butterfield was awarded for $460,000. It could comfortably seat 1,000 students, though it was believed that it would be quite a few years before the school reached full capacity. The first unit of the Highland Park High School was of English-type architecture, laid out with a central mass three stories tall, with two end wings linked by classrooms. The East Wing had an 1,100-seat auditorium, and the West Wing featured a three-story gymnasium and basement swimming pool. In the center were school offices, a library, and recitation rooms. The exterior was done up in a quarry-faced gray limestone with moldings and detail work of dressed Bedford stone. Inside the school were long hallways of cane stone and ornamental carved oak. Dedicated classrooms included sewing, carpentry, machine tooling, botany, chemistry, and drawing. The cornerstone was laid down in October of 1914. The new building was scheduled to formally open in September, but even before then, school administrators were facing an unanticipated problem, overcrowding.
Here is one of the classrooms on the college side that was pretty well preserved. Between 1910 and 1916, the population of Highland Park grew from 4,100 to 28,000. By 1920, there would be 46,500 residents, a staggering 1,000% increase in population over just 10 years. Workers from across the globe were drawn to Detroit and Highland Park in particular by the Ford Company and its promise of $5 a day at work wage. The assembly line had revolutionized the way the cars were made, and in doing so, made Highland Park the center of the automotive revolution. The school board found itself with hundreds of new students every year, requiring hasty additions to existing school buildings and the construction of new schools in neighborhoods that were springing up around town. By the time Highland Park High School opened in September of 1915, enrollment far exceeded expectations, with 850 students signing up. And in 1916, just a year after it opened, the number grew to over 1,000 high school students, filling the school to capacity. This is the former gymnasium on the college side of the school. Plans for a second unit of the high school for 1,500 additional students to be built next to the first were immediately drawn up, with construction beginning in 1917. Though the second unit of the high school used identical building materials in the same English styling as the first, it was laid out differently. Initially, the second unit was intended to be a high school for girls and a junior college, and was built with its own separate gymnasium and swimming pool. Instead of a second auditorium, a larger library and additional classrooms were set aside for the junior college program that would share the building with the girls' high school. The new high school for girls opened in September of 1918, with a total enrollment of 1,525 students. Highland Park Junior College opened in 1918 as well, with 35 students. Course offerings included French, Rhetoric, History, Chemistry, Zoology, and Analytic Geometry. Within a few years, the two high school programs merged and became co-ed. In 1927, a vocational educational building, including an automotive repair shop, was built to the south of the school, connected by an overhead walkway. A further addition to the vocational wing was added in 1938, and the auditorium was renovated in 1939. The high school thrived with as many as 3,000 students and a host of extracurricular activities, including athletics, homemaking, and a school radio station. Enrollment at Highland Park Junior College steadily increased to around 300 students by the 1920s, but slowed in the aftermath of the Great Depression. Lack of adequate space and a drop in the number of students to 159 in 1929 nearly led to the closure of the college, but the residents of the Highland Park voted to keep it open. This paid off in the long run, as after the Second World War ended, enrollment skyrocketed from 117 in 1943 to 1800 in 1947, as veterans returning to Highland Park used the GI Bill to pay for their college education. By the 1940s, population in Highland Park had peaked. Ford had moved auto production out of Highland Park to a new factory in the suburbs in 1927 and moved its headquarters to Dearborn in 1930. The construction of freeways made it easier for people to live outside the city, hastening an outward flight for residents to the suburbs. The racial composition of Highland Park changed as well. 
By 1968, over half of the 4,488 students were black, while teachers and administrators were mostly white. Sit-ins protesting the lack of diversity in the school and administration were frequent in 1969. As part of a district-wide modernization program, several older schools in the Highland Park area were demolished and replaced with newer buildings in the 1950s and 1960s. A nursery school was built on the south side of the campus in 1950, and an elementary school was built a block south in 1961. Plans for a new, modern high school to be built north on Woodward Avenue were drawn up in the early 1970s, which will replace the existing school. The junior college, now a community college, would take over the entire building and expand its vocational offerings. Construction on the new building was already underway when on the evening of March 18, 1975, a large fire broke out in the gymnasium of the old high school. Stacks of rolled up wrestling mats were set aflight as a practical joke, but the blaze quickly spread out of control, causing the roof and floor to cave into the basement swimming pool. The fire burned for over five hours as firefighters from Highland Park, Detroit, and Hamtramck struggled to contain it to just the gymnasium. While smoke and water damage throughout the high school were repaired fairly quickly, repairing the gymnasium was estimated to cost over 600000 Since the high school was moving out in the near future, athletics were moved to the community college building, which had its own pool and gymnasium. In 1977, the new Highland Park Community High School on Woodward Avenue opened, and the community college took over the Glendale campus. A temporary roof was built over the shell of the burned-out gymnasium as administrators struggled to figure out what to do with it. Not wishing to demolish the handsome limestone facade of the gym, the wings sat empty until 1983, when the community college approached Bloomfield Hills landscape architect James Scott about reusing the space. Scott envisioned turning the empty hall into a multi-purpose concourse and performing art space, linking the two units together. Within a few days, his ideas went from sketches to planning, and work began a short time later. The swimming pool, in which the burning debris from above had been dumped, was covered by a new floor and sealed off. The open area above was a mix of old and new, retaining the limestone wall of the adjacent gym, but incorporating modern styling throughout. Hexagons were the dominant theme, with planters turning the concourse into a green space. Work on the renovation concluded in 1985. In the years after, the space was used for concerts, special events, and art galleries. Though enrollment at Highland Park Community College was 2,000 to 3,000 through most of the 1980s, the college operated at a deficit that had grown to $1.4 million by 1989. In an effort to save money, school administrators cut the LPN and respiratory therapy programs, sparking a four-day sit-in strike by the students. Though the administration reversed its decision, the financial situation continued to deteriorate, with accusations of rampant misuse of funds. After missing two consecutive annual audits, Michigan Governor John Engler began to withheld state funding for the college, as investigators report that Highland Park Community College had the worst facilities of a community college in the state. In February of 1995, Governor Engler announced that all funding for the college would be stripped from the budget due to chronic financial and academic problems, stating though the college has a long and distinguished tradition, it has become apparent that it is no longer an economically viable institution. Local representatives fought hard to keep the school open, arguing that it was making progress in fixing its financial situation and that the loss of the school would be devastating to Highland Park's troubled economy. By December of 1995, the college had run out of money and closed down for good. The immediate impact of closing Highland Park Community College was that the students were stranded in mid-study, some just a semester away from graduation. Though many other colleges nearby tried to accommodate students, many never finished their studies and walked away from secondary education. While elected officials fought to get funding restored, the school reopened as Highland Park Career Academy, offering an alternative high school program and vocational training for students and young adults in the fields of nursing, dental hygiene, and auto repair. In 2001, the Ford Motor Company opened an automotive training center in the Vocational Educational Building, complete with demonstration cars. 
Highland Park City Schools steadily lost students through the 2000s, with K-12 enrollment falling to 2,700 by 2008 as students were lured away to other nearby school districts. As schools were funded by the state on per-pupil basis, this led to a major revenue shortfall for Highland Park. On January 23, 2009, the school board shut down the Career Academy with no official notification to parents, laying off 36 teachers to close the budget gap. Students were again left in the lurch with the cancellation of their programs with few options for continuing their studies elsewhere, and leaving students stranded in men's study. Only seniors were allowed to stay at the school until the end of the year, with the remaining students to attend night school at Highland Park Community High School. However, the first scheduled night of classes was canceled without explanation. Most students dropped out and the building closed for good in the summer of 2009. This is the former swimming pool of the building. For over 90 years, the old high school and college have been the center of Highland Park's education system. By the time the school closed, the neighborhood and city around it had changed considerably. Ferrer School and the hospital closed in 1990s, along with the main library in 2002. The nursery school closed permanently in 2005. Most of the apartment buildings along Glendale and Highland had been vacated many years, leaving large gaps of fabric in the neighborhood. In the end, the closing of the Career Academy wound up costing the school district a large amount of funding as students dropped out or left for other school districts. With just 969 students enrolled in 2012, the state of Michigan declared a financial emergency and the Highland Park City Schools were taken over by a state emergency financial manager who converted the district into a privately operated charter school system. The new charter school operator found that the three remaining school buildings, Highland Park Community High, Ford and Barber, were in terrible disrepair and required proximately expensive work to be brought up to standards. In early 2012, school officials started looking at consolidation of all the schools into one K-12 as a way to save money. One alternative discussed was reopening the Hold High School and College building, which was large enough to support all of the students left in the district. The emergency manager visited the closed building in February to see if it would be viable to reopen. Now we are heading back through the original high school side of the building. Since its closing in 2009, the old high school and college have been frozen in time, with little more than security and routine maintenance being carried out in its empty halls and classrooms. Though fairly secure for a few years, when the state took over Highland Park City Schools, patrols at the closed building had been discontinued, leaving the school briefly open to scrappers and metal thieves. In the short time between the state takeover and the resumption of security at the school, scrappers had done enough damage to make reopening the school cost prohibitive. The plan was abandoned in favor of letting the three remaining schools stay open. In the years since, scrappers and vandals have dismantled the old Highland Park High School. When the local police department set up two non-working squad cars in the back of the building to deter people from entering, the cars were vandalized and removed less than a month later. In October of 2012, the windows of the school were boarded up, but by that time the damage had already been done. The property was put up for sale with an asking price of $3 million. Several fires have caused extensive damage to the school since it closed. In May of 2022, a large fire destroyed the auditorium, causing it to collapse. So this may be some of the last footage of the auditorium. We visited on a Saturday and the auditorium burnt down two days later on a Monday.
Well, thank you all for watching my documentary and video tour of the Highland Park High School and Community College. Please leave a like, share, subscribe, comment, and I'll catch you on the next video.